Hooray for the Swedish summer, right? Now, let's talk about prisoners for a second. Prisoners originally had an MC-17 rating for, you know, the violence, but mostly for the tone of the movie. This movie had an almost MC-17 rating because of its tone. You don't hear that every day. But how good is the rest of the movie? Let's find out, shall we? This is Prisoners. And Franklin, aka Terence Howard and Hugh Jackman, are two friends living, you know, somewhere in rural Pennsylvania. And they're friends, and you know, their wives are friends, and their two daughters are friends. And isn't life happy and all that stuff? It's Thanksgiving, and you know, they're having you know, a usual casual dinner. And uh, the two girls are going outside, you know, for some strolling and stuff like that. But they never come back. The police is of course called in, and uh, Detective Loki, aka uh, Jake Gyllenhaal takes a very special interest to this case because of his, you know, past and stuff like that. But there are no sightings of, of the girls. But they are finding this slightly mentally challenged man played by Paul Dano, who, you know, might know something. He had an RV and they saw an RV, you know, out there. But uh, he isn't smart enough to be able to, you know, cook up something like a, like a kidnapping. He doesn't have the mental capacity to, to think about that and, you know, uh, removing evidence or stuff like that. And, you know, they're questioning him, but they can't find anything. They have to let him go. But once he, as he has let him go, he accidentally a slip of the tongue or meaning something completely different. He, he gives Hugh Jackman a little bit of doubt. Maybe he has done it after all. After the police cannot find them, Hugh Jackman decides to take matters into his own hands. And uh, he straight up kidnaps him along with Terence Howard and they set up their own little torture chamber in, you know, a, a remote house they have, beating the ever-loving shit out of this mentally disabled man in hopes of that he will tell them where the girls are. But have they gotten the, the right man? Is he actually, you know, innocent? Is there somebody else who has kidnapped them? And how far will they go? in this um, effort to, to, bring, to bring their daughters back and uh, how much will it, will it damage their souls and also the police is starting to breathe down their neck because hey whatever happened to that guy who we you know uh, mistook for being a kidnapper he's kind of missing do you know anything about that and the friction between Howard and Jackman is you know starting to show where is this going to go and what's behind this Oh man, this movie requires a lot of you as a viewer. It is not a movie to sit down, chew some popcorn and say, hey, let's watch a fun movie. Prisoners, everybody. Prisoners is a really, really difficult watch. It will take a little part of your soul away that you may never, ever get back. Also, fun fact, this movie is over two and a half hours long. So you're going to have to endure this mega dark, mega depressing movie for almost two and a half hours and uh, who boy this is a tricky one to really process because the acting is so freaking fantastic i think this just might be hugh jackman's best offering as an actor terence howard who i've always lo looked at as a okay actor puts on a tour de force performance in this one and uh, I mean, we have Viola Davis as his wife. She's fantastic. Mario Bello might not, you know, be on the level as she is or any of the other ones, but she's totally fine too. And also we have Jake Gyllenhaal just two years away from giving his all-time greatest performance in the absolutely fantastic movie Nightcrawler. I would like to sing the Judas Priest song Nightcrawler right now, but it wouldn't, you know, fit tonally with, with what the rest of this movie is and this review would be in shambles by then, so I'm not gonna do it. Anyway, one thing that happens to me sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, it is that I become a very greedy little piglet 
when I'm watching a movie from a genre I usually don't like or I'm usually not a huge fan of. So this very dark drama with some spliced in uh, thriller elements into it, I thought when we were you know, two thirds into this movie, oh man, this movie is so good. You have me right where you want to. Just wave it in now, guys. And I will give you a hell of a rating. And then my brain starts to preemptively think about, oh, they just need to do this and this and this and this and this. If they just do that, everything will be, will be fantastic. Even though all of these things usually are not what the movie would do, but I'm hoping that they will go further. I will hope they will go deeper than they do. When they don't, I get a little, oh, dang it. And I, I knew this movie wouldn't go so far and so deep as I wanted it to do, but I thought since this is a Denis Deneville picture, maybe they would. Instead, they went a little bit of the, more of the traditional route, which also presented a slight bit of a problem because they ended this movie. I wouldn't call this a twist. I would call this a dramatic turn of event. Also a very good album by Dream Theater, by the way. Um, I wouldn't call it so much as a twist. This is the low, lower form of twist. When, when that happened, I thought, oh no, no, ding it. Because they went from a super dark, mega fascinating, epic thriller drama to a subpar episode of Criminal Minds. And I just went, you were going so well, movie. You were going so well. But then they're able to bounce back. They won't make a full recovery, but they make a good recovery because of the ambiguous and absolutely superb ending. I think, personally, shut the fuck up that this was such a fantastic ending that it almost uh, were able to, to make a full recovery from uh, what they originally did. And I think that even though it couldn't quite, you know, deliver what I wanted it to do, and, all, and also I should also point out that I would have really liked if this movie could have been a little bit more Hitchcockian and if it could have used a little bit more time devoted to how much evil stuff can a good character do to still be able to call himself a good character. A character because I thought that was the most fascinating aspect of the movie. Unfortunately, they didn't focus as much on that as I hoped it would be. Prisoners, for some odd reason, made a buttload of money uh, when, when it was released, which I find very, very peculiar because I thought that a movie like this would, you know, play to a very niche part of the movie going industry. But maybe the uh, star power, fuck off! was you know enough for this movie to, to to bring in the big bucks this was very important because this was Denis Deneville's first Hollywood movie and because this one went well and it made a lot of money and people really liked it and the critics liked it and everybody loved it then he was able to to you know start his undefeated streaks of absolutely stonking good movies Blade Runner 2049 Sicario and of course Arrival one of the best movies of the past decade now, should you watch this movie? Yes, you should. But be aware, this is a tough movie to get through. This is not a movie, you know, for your date on, you know, your sixth or seventh date. Hey, let's watch a movie. And then you watch Prisoners and you go, ugh. This is also a movie that, you know, I, I, I have a child in the same age bracket, basically, as uh, uh, these... Uh, the, the, the daughters of Hugh Jackman and I just felt, you know, a big ball of lump in my stomach. What would you do? And Questions like that always fascinate me, even though this is a very tough watch move for me, at least. It is a really well played, fantastically acted, very well written, and a very, very nicely shot movie. It has a couple of, you know, moments where, they, where it kind of drags a little bit, but for the most part, this is an almost perfect movie. I love this movie even though it could have been just a little bit better. And I also wish they could have made this more of a, you know, the, the ratio is basically 85% drama and 50% thriller. If this movie would have been 67% thriller and 33% drama, we would have talked about this in the upper 90s echelons. 
Let's go to ratings, by the way. This movie gets a very, very solid 83 points. The slightly botched finale is, of course, saved by the fantastic ending, but I'm still saying that this movie is absolutely fantastic because I sometimes want too much from my movies when, when they're going, you know, into the, uh, to the upper echelons. This is a very tough drama to get through. There are some nail-biting tension sequences in, in this one that almost is too much for me. I just wish they were a little bit more plentiful. This is a really good movie, but it is not a movie that you see multiple times. You see this movie once. I don't think anybody ever will be able to watch this movie twice. So I'll see you next time from well, so-and-so reviewing well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Fucking rain, man.